Hello, welcome to another of our slide review sessions, Fusing Digital Slides. That's part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. I'm coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and I'm glad you could join me for this uh, video discussion about a, a challenging case uh, which came to our attention because of the attention of um, uh, quality review processes in place in our hospital. So let me talk about it a little bit more. The woman was a postmenopausal woman who had been seen at an outside hospital, a private gynecologist, and found to have an endometrial polyp. Um, she had some mild bleeding, but not serious. Um, and uh, so she came to biopsy, was thought to have a tumor, um, and wanted a hysterectomy. So that was performed. So uh, let's just talk a little bit about the sorts of uh, lesions that we could see that are polypoid within the uterus. Uh, of course, there are the typical glandular and stromal polyps that we call endometrial polyps, usually have thick walled blood vessels and so forth. Smooth muscle tumors, leiomyomas, can also form polypoid masses in the uh, uterus, as can a mixture of the two, adenomyomas, and the so-called atypical adenomyoma or Bazur's polyp. Uh, a few malignancies tend to present in a polypoid fashion, such as stromal nodule or some other forms of stromal neoplasia, uh, and a number of carcinomas, uh, particularly serous, uh, can involve or present within an existing polyp, uh, but typical ordinary garden variety endometrioid adenocarcinomas also can involve uh, polyps. Now, a number of biphasic tumors such as carcinosarcoma or adenosarcoma can present in a polypoid fragment uh, or fashion, as can occasional uh, rhabdomyosarcoma type lesions and others, of course. So in this case, uh, the polyp uh, was examined and found to have some features that looked like a typical endometrial polyp with dilated inactive glands amidst a fibrous stroma. Uh, and we have several areas like that. But mixed with that, you can see here geographic areas of uh, increased cellularity and uh, more nuclear material as it forms this more uh, purplish color. Uh, also, at low power, note how we can appreciate uh, that there are some slit-like spaces in this lesion, uh, such as we see here, irregularly shaped glands, in contrast to normal endometrioid glands, which tend to be more rounded or oval uh, shaped. Uh, and that should be a clue, even at this low magnification, that we may not be dealing with typical garden variety uh, endometrial carcinoma. Uh, as we come into higher magnification, we can see there's also a very prominent micropapillary uh, component to this. And while endometrial, typical endometrial adenocarcinoma can have micropapillae uh, in some instances, it's usually not associated with a high degree of nuclear atypia. Uh, additionally, notice that the margin here of the epithelial cells is somewhat jagged. Um, and uh, as we've indicated, papillary, in contrast to usual endometrial adenocarcinomas, which have a more smooth and not undulating surface. Um, occasionally, necrosis can be seen in the lumen in uh, those tumors, but uh, are not particularly identified here. And here we see an entrapped benign gland uh, uh, adjacent to this uh, tumor. Now, as we look at this, we notice that there is a high degree of nuclear atypia, there's macronucleoli, there's overlapping, there's mitoses, a karyorexis. So this is a high-grade uh, carcinoma uh, in terms of the nuclear atypia. Here's some mitotic activity, and again, a benign gland here. So uh, in this day and age, uh, it's appropriate to uh, take this diagnosis or take what we see as a, a carcinoma in this polyp and attempt to subcategorize it uh, in terms of molecular findings. This is because the Tumor Cancer Genome Atlas, TCGA, has provided us with a very rich database uh, that helps to define different subtypes and also different prognoses and uh, even now more specific therapies. So the low-grade endometrial tumors that are predominantly glands, not solid, 
uh, fall into usually three different categories. The copy number low, which is more the garden variety type, uh, those with microsatellite instability, and those with uh, pole E, or DNA polymerase epsilon uh, mutation, uh, that tend to have a very good prognosis and may warrant just simple follow-up and observation. Now, the MSI tumors can also occur in some of the high-grade settings, um, and there are a few pole tumors in the high-grade uh, setting as well, um, but that certainly is something that warrants uh, more careful evaluation. Um, copy number high is kind of the fourth category of endometrial adenocarcinomas, uh, and that predominantly is found in the serous group with TP53 mutation, uh, but can occasionally also be found in uh, high-grade endometrioid tumors uh, as of the more typical uh, type um, as well. <clears throat> now, one of the things uh, that has driven this, I think uh, moving us more towards doing uh, further testing to subcategorize that, is that the CAP checklist now mandates or suggests that we subcategorize these tumors according to these four major types, uh, the pole ultramutated, mismatch repair deficient, P53 mutated, um, and those with no specific molecular profile, which would generally be the copy number low. Of note, however, is that uh, this uh, categorization recognizes that there are some uh, endometrioid tumors uh, that have overlap with serous carcinoma in this P53 mutation uh, status. Uh, and so some endometrioid type endometrial adenocarcinomas can have <coughs> TP53 mutations, just like uh, serous carcinomas. Well, uh, how do we classify these? How do we get to that classification? Uh, there are a, a number of particular uh, tests which may be of use, and of course pathologists have been using immunohistochemistry as surrogates for uh, molecular phenotyping for some time, and so MMR protein expression uh, is very useful in defining MSI high status. Uh, typically these four uh, protein markers can be used, um, and if they're retained then there's no loss or their uh, uh, microsatellite uh, stable uh, uh, categorization is uh, used, but if one or more is lost, uh, then we typically look at the uh, categorization of uh, deficient status, either due to methylation or due to uh, germline mutation. Uh, P53 staining, immunohistochemical staining, is very predictive of uh, TP53 mutation, and so we can use that as well. Now, P16 staining in the endometrium can often also indicate a mutation status that uh, will go along with uh, serous uh, type uh, carcinomas, and may be uh, not present in more conventional endometrioid tumors, which tend to have a splotchy or scattered staining pattern. Additionally, some of the dedifferentiated low-grade tumors uh, with uh, very high-grade foci can uh, be differentiated sometimes by loss of uh, some of the sweet sniff uh, proteins such as BRG1 or INA, INI1, uh, and maybe also other markers such as Pax8 or hormone receptors. Uh, we also use uh, immunohistochemistry reflexly in the setting of a TP53 mutated pattern uh, because of its therapeutic implications in uh, those uh, tumors as well. Well, so what was done in this particular case was a battery of immunohistochemical stains, and uh, they showed some ERPR positivity. Uh, there was Pax8 uh, positivity. Um, and there was P16 diffuse expression, uh, but also uh, this uh, pattern for <clears throat> P53 uh, staining. And so as we see here, there's quite a lot of staining uh, in this tumor. So we might say, well, this looks like a, a, you know, a TP53 mutated pattern. But as we look at this, we note that the staining here is not the usual pattern of staining. This is a diffuse cytoplasmic and nuclear positive staining. So this is uh, not just pure nuclear overexpression pattern, uh, but this is a very strong cytoplasmic staining and actually sometimes uh, negative in the nuclei. Uh, so this uh, created some consternation uh, because this is a uh, very uncommonly encountered staining pattern and therefore interpretation uh, in those not familiar with this pattern uh, is problematic. 
So I'd just like to review very quickly what the P53 staining patterns are. Uh, overexpression, diffuse overexpression is a nuclear pattern. Uh, diffuse loss or absence of staining. Here we see only some of the stromal cells showing positivity, but all of the tumor cells are negative. And then the pattern that we saw in our case, this uh, strong cytoplasmic and nuclear staining uh, pattern as well. Uh, this would be closer to a wild type pattern, but uh, has a bit a, a sort of an upregulated pattern uh, where there's a you know, weak or variegated uh, staining. Uh, this is still a wild type pattern, but is somewhat uh, atypical because usually the wild type is more like this null pattern and the overlap can be challenging uh, and require a very careful search to document the presence of uh, nuclear staining within the tumor. When we look at the corresponding molecular genetics in terms of TP53 uh, mutation, <clears throat> these patterns are very predictive of uh, a mutation being present. So the null uh, pattern, which is found in about 24% of tumors, the diffuse overexpression pattern, 70% of tumors. And so we can see this is almost 95% of the, of the cases. Uh, the uh, a cytoplasmic staining pattern that we observed in our case uh, is, however, present in only 2% of cases. So if you've never seen this pattern, it's understandable uh, that you might not recognize it as uh, one of the common patterns or one of the patterns of uh, uh, mutation status. Now, rarely uh, wild type staining uh, has been observed in patients with a documented TP53 mutation, up to 4% of patients. Um, and so uh, while we report this as wild type staining, um, uh, we need to remember that if we have very uh, concerning morphology for serous carcinoma, uh, we should uh, consider the possibility of uh, doing uh, genotypic testing to define that using uh, next gen sequencing or other methods. So uh, based on this, our final sign out in this case that was submitted for review after uh, a slightly different diagnosis elsewhere uh, was endometrial serous carcinoma arising in an endometrial polyp and with a diffuse cytoplasmic overexpression pattern uh, for the mutation uh, change. Well, I hope that that's helpful to you and that you'll uh, avoid this pitfall uh, as you uh, diagnose endometrial cancers and think about uh, what the meaning is of your immunohistochemistry chemistry stains and uh, work to interpret them properly. Um, we hope that you like this, and if you did, please hit the like button. Uh, we are always uh, hoping to uh, get our uh, uh, videos out to more people, and uh, by uh, hitting like, that helps the algorithm to recognize it as something of use and value. And of course, uh, if you subscribe, and we hope you will, uh, that helps the channel also, and uh, uh, ensures that you'll receive notification of uh, uh, any subsequent videos that we release, which we do quite regularly. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.